In this video, we're going to assemble our updated 8-gallon stainless steel modular distiller, including many of the potential add-ons. We'll also talk about uses for the still, as well as legalities associated with distilling. The entire system is built upon a milk can style boiler, and like many of the other parts, it's food grade 304 stainless steel. On top of the boiler is a stainless vapor cone with a couple of accessory ports, and it's attached to the boiler with the help of a food grade silicone gasket and a butterfly clamp. Next, we're going to install a 5 psi pressure relief valve. By nature, stills are open loop and no pressure should ever build, but in the event of an unforeseen pressure buildup, a PRV will offer protection. And I believe we're the only company to provide these as standard equipment on every still we sell. In the other port on the dome lid, we've installed a plug, which we'll get back to later, but for now, just make sure you're adding thread tape to these fittings. Moving on, we're going to begin to assemble the one and a half inch column, starting with the 90 degree elbows at the top. Grab one of the 90s and place a silicone gasket on the end. Either end will do. Grab the other 90 and sandwich the gasket in between them. Then attach them together with a tri-clamp. Snug it up, but there's no need to make it super tight at this point. I'll show you why later. The next thing we'll do is add our column. For this still build, we're going to use a 1.5 inch C110 food grid copper column. We'll also need another silicone gasket. Place the gasket on top of the column and on top of that, place either end of the 90 degree elbows that were just clamped together. Then secure this connection with another tri-clamp. After that, we're going to attach the column to the domed lid using another silicone gasket and another tri-clamp. We prefer and recommend 1.5 inch columns for boilers of this size, but you could always bump that up to two inches with an adapter if you wanted. A variety of columns are available for our stills. Like I said, we're using copper for this build, but you could also install a stainless column or a bubble plate column. And by the way, we love using tri-clamps because it makes it super easy to add accessories and or modify your still configuration. Speaking of still mods, we're opting to use a copper shotgun condenser for this configuration. We also have a 100% stainless shotgun condenser as well as a single chamber stainless condenser. To attach the condenser, use another silicone gasket and another tri-clamp. And I suppose this would be a good time to talk about how these condensers actually work. They're called Liebig condensers and as liquid in the still boiler is heated, it turns into vapor and travels up through the cone and the column and the vapor pressure actually then pushes it down through the condenser. The condenser is just a jacket filled with cool water that surrounds the drip arm of the still. Cool water is piped into the bottom of the condenser and flows up and out the top of it. This causes the inside wall of the drip arm to become cool enough for a vapor to condense on it and drip out of the still. The cooling water and vapor are in separate chambers and they never mix. Like I said, we offer a variety of condenser sizes and materials, but all of our condensers share two things in common. That is the fact that they attach to the stills using tri-clamps and that they have 5 8 inch cooling water ports which are sized perfectly for garden hose. Now that we have the condenser installed, we'll adjust it so it's angled away from the still just slightly and then we'll tighten the tri-clamp that joins the elbows together. And because we're using a shotgun condenser, we need to install a cup at the output which will allow liquid distillate to pool and then be directed to a focused output, making it safer and easier to collect. There is a vent on the side of the collection cup which should be pointed up and away from the still. The vent has a barbed and you could add an extension hose on that if you wanted to. Here is what the cup looks like when it's installed. The vent is on the right, the drain's on the bottom. Here is the cooling water input and the cooling water 5 8 inch output. Next, we are going to be installing a plug and the half inch port in the boiler. This is another accessory port and regardless of what is installed here, you'll need to make sure to add thread tape. Also double check to make sure you've added thread tape to both of the ports in the domed lid. After this, we'll turn the still around and use a stainless steel 1.5 inch ferrule cap 
a silicone gasket and a tri-clamp to close the large accessory port located on the other side of the boiler. Here's a close up of that port and before I tell you what this and the other ports can be used for, let's take a look at the progress we've made. At this point we have a fully built stove that could be used on a hot plate or a propane burner, although we don't advise that. However, before going any further, you are going to want to add some silicone tubing to the condenser output to make sure the distillate is directed a safe distance from the still as it's being collected. This attaches with a simple hose clamp and a screwdriver. For the folks who have the proper licensing and permits to distill fuel alcohol and or distilled spirits, an option here is to use a device called a parrot, which allows for proof to be measured real time as it exits the still. Not everyone prefers to use these, but doing so is as simple as placing one under the drip arm along with a collection vessel, then lowering a distilling hydrometer down into the opening in the top. So the still's really coming together here. We have a basic setup that can be used to distill a variety of compounds. Everything from distilled water to water distilled essential oils or fuel alcohol and spirits. Though regardless of what you're distilling, you'll want to be able to monitor temperature. And depending on how you're operating the still, there are several locations where you want to be able to check the temp. The most common place a thermometer is installed is in the boiler. Knowing the temperature of the liquid in the boiler is pretty handy and can also be pretty important. To install a thermometer here, unscrew the plug, add some thread tape to the thermometer, and then screw it into place. We offer a large phase thermometer on our website with a temperature range perfect for distilling. Next, we're going to add a pressure gauge to the vapor cone. Like I said, pressure should never build in the still while distilling, though we built two ports into our domed lid one for a pressure relief valve and another for an optional pressure gauge. To install it, add thread tape and screw it into place. Another place where it's handy to monitor temperature is at the top of the column. To install a thermometer here, you'll need to remove the elbow and condenser assembly and install a T that has a half inch port built into the side of it. Make sure to use silicone gaskets when installing the adapter and also make sure to add thread tape to the thermometer before screwing it into place. Knowing vapor temperature at the top of the column is very handy and I recommend installing both a boiler and a column thermometer. Next, we're going to install a sight glass. You could actually install this anywhere, but we're going to place it at the bottom of the column. As with all of the other 1.5 inch fittings, you'll use silicone gaskets and tri-clamps to put it into place. We're also going to pack it with some copper mesh. Copper mesh is useful for a variety of things. First, it removes any sulfides that may be present in the vapor, and it also creates a thermal bridge that causes a slight natural reflux in the column, increasing the purity of the distillate. It's actually possible to increase natural reflux even further by filling the 1.5 inch column with copper packing. Installing four to six copper scrubbers will greatly increase the surface area available for condensation and reflux to occur within the column. The additional surface area will also ensure that the vapor comes into contact with copper at some point during its journey up the column and the chemical reaction needed to remove sulfur byproducts occurs. Push the packing material into place with something long and narrow such as a mash paddle but do not tightly pack the copper mesh within the column. Copper has been the standard material used to construct stills for hundreds of years. It's still used today partially because of traditions, but also because of the positive effect that copper has on distillate. However, copper is not as durable as stainless steel. It is much more difficult to clean and maintain than stainless and also isn't appropriate for all types of distillation. The entire still doesn't need to be fabricated with copper to realize the benefits. And for this reason, we prefer using stainless steel as the base structure for our stills and adding copper where needed, depending on what's being distilled. The next consideration for distillation is the heat source. We recommend using a digital controller to power a heating element that plugs directly into the still. Although our still boilers do have a flat bottom and can be used on a hot plate or over an open flame. To use the digital controller, you'll first need to remove the thermometer from the boiler and add a thermo well. Make sure to add thread tape before installing. After this, you'll loosen the cord grip and insert the temperature probe included with the digital controller 
into the thermo well. Make sure to re-tighten the cord grip once it's in place. The next step will be installing a heating element in the 1.5 inch port on the other side of the boiler. First remove the tri-clamp and the cap, then place a silicone gasket over the element and insert it into the ferrule opening. Secure it with a tri-clamp. We offer two different controllers, a 120 volt controller that powers a 1650 watt element which is what you see here. This element plugs into the controller like so, and the controller plugs into a standard household receptacle using a built-in GFCI plug-end. This is a great basic distillation setup with a ton of versatility and it's capable of distilling almost anything. Though we also offer a 240 volt controller capable of powering a 5500 watt element, I've also only mentioned some of our column and condenser options as well as only a handful of our distillation accessories. For more information on the rest of the goods, check out clawhammersupply.com and make sure to read our legal summaries before purchasing or using any of our distillation products. Thanks for watching.